Hi everyone, it's Robin with Boot Tesharen and Bootiful Flowers in Vancouver, BC. Uh, we have another video tutorial for you today. It's on how to make a mixed calla and rose seasonal bouquet. Okay, we're gonna start our tutorial the way we start all of our videos, um, an overview of the supplies. You want a, a vase of water ready for your finished bouquet with just a couple of inches of water at most. You would need um, a really good pair of snips is always what I recommend. Uh, just because flower stems, you wanna cut them cleanly and, and strong so you don't have any crushing of the bottom of the stem. Uh, sometimes you can get away with really, really strong kitchen scissors. Um, in this case, that might work because you're not working with any hydrangeas or woody stems. But if you're able to work it into your budget, I do recommend getting the, the proper floral snips or gardening shears. Um, the tape that I use to bind the bouquet, I like a strapping tape. If you've watched our other videos, you know that the other option is something like a, a floral tape, which is the tape you use for boutonniere. I don't like it. I don't find it to be very, I don't like it to bind bouquets. I use it a lot for boutonnieres, but I don't find it to be as strong or as sticky as the strapping tape. Uh, you will need a ribbon to finish off your bouquet handle to, um, to make it decorative. I like a, the most popular color I use is a white or antique ivory satin. It's really your choice. You can use a color ribbon if you'd like. I use the short pins to, um, uh, to attach the ribbon to the bouquet handle. Um, just a preference again, you can use the longer pins, although these are easier to insert into the stem. And today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to wire some of the filler. That's an optional step, but I did want to show you because it is a good skill to have if you have a long-term interest in wedding flowers. So for that, today we're going to need what's called a, either a 26 or 28 gauge wire, a straight wire, and that's basically a very thin wire that we're going to use to wire the wax flower. Now, those of you who have visited our Boutte Jardin site might recognize this bouquet from the Flor Royale bouquet pack. It's the same method you would use to make the bridal bouquet in that package. We also have a picture tutorial on our blog, so we kind of have it all covered. Um, and just a note, if you are interested in that package and you live in the Vancouver region, it is available in other colors. So, I have the flowers here that we're going to be using in the um, tutorial today to make the bridal bouquet. To start, we have roses. So. Um, we're using white roses today, but really in this combination, as you can tell, you can use any combo of colors that um, works with your wedding colors. And we're going to do the prep, the same prep we do on roses um, that we have done in all the other bouquets where we've used the same flower. We start by taking, well, it doesn't matter what you start with, but I'm going to start by taking the guard petals off. Those were the outer sort of bruised looking petals. This is a beautiful white rose called Tibet. I think it's my favorite. It has a tendency to open really big. I just got it yesterday, so still a little bit tight. Tibet has a tendency to open super big with time, um, but I don't mind it like this. I think it'll work better in the bouquet. You take off the leaves. I just snap them off. You can cut them off with snips if you prefer. And from the looks of it, Tibet has no thorns. So um, if it did have thorns, you could use your snips to snip them off or just snap them off, just being careful not to damage the stem. So that's pretty much it for the roses. We're gonna use about 10 to 12 today um, in terms of overall numbers for a bridal bouquet. That's a good guide. This is a Cala, it's Picasso. Um, or is it Picasso? It's a, anyways, it's a bicolor sort of cream and purple. It's beautiful. Um, very, very nice calla. So we're going to use about, uh, I think it's eight to 10 of these today. And the thing with callas is you don't really have to do anything to them. They don't have any leaves on them. So they're, they're kind of ready to go. Sometimes you have to make them curve and that's particularly important if you're making a completely calla bouquet, but I don't find it to be as important when you're mixing it with something else. The third flower type is one that a lot of, um, People don't know about it. If you don't know flowers, it's stock. Uh, Matiola is the, the scientific name, and stock is used a lot in weddings, but it's not a flower that people recognize by name or maybe even by sight. Um, it's very fragrant, so that's important to know if you're trying to avoid fragrance in your bridal bouquet. Um, it's a little bit like a hydrangea in that it really, really loves water. So this is another flower that you want to keep hydrated as long as possible. And what I wanted to show you with stock, so just like you do with any other flower, you want to start taking the leaves off. And what I wanted to show you, this is a really good example, is sometimes stock is kind of leggy. And by leggy, I mean there's a tall, there's a long segment where there's no flowers near the top of the, uh, the flower. So that's not always a problem. If you're putting this in, say, a large ceremony arrangement, that's not a big deal. Um, if I'm putting it in something like a little, um, like a bud vase or 
a vintage bottle. I think it looks fantastic, that sort of like long line at the top, but that doesn't always work for a bouquet. It really depends. So the tip I'm gonna give you today is one that I think you can carry forward any time you work with flowers, particularly for wedding flowers, and that's to know you don't have to use the flower the same way it comes to you. So with stock, what I do, and not all florists do this, and this is, it completely comes down to how you want it to work in your bouquet. When it's leggy like this, I often just trim it off. So you need to know that you can cut a flower from the bottom and you can cut it from the top. The most important thing when you do that is I'm doing it here. You want to bury the cut. You don't want to cut it so it's like a, like a little stem poking out with a blunt cut. You cut it as low as you can so you can't even tell that it's been trimmed. It looks like a totally different flower now. So that's the way I'm going to use it. I like the flowers sort of at the very top of the stem. So any of the stems that have that, this is actually pretty good. I don't need to do that for this one. I'm going to trim them so they're kind of like a little clump of flowers at the top. The very last uh, thing we're going to use is our filler and it's wax flowers. So if you've seen other videos, you know this is my favorite. It's very pretty. It's very elegant. Um, and the thing we're going to do differently today with wax, so there's, you can use it the way you would use anything. It's multi-branched. So you can trim off smaller branches and then take off the little side shoots, saving any that have flowers on them for your boutonnieres. And you can use it like this. And the other thing I'm going to show you today is how to wire wax. And the, the only reason you would wire wax is for a boutonniere most often, um, but also if like, say you were running low and you really needed to use as many of these little side shoots as possible, but they weren't long enough to insert in your bouquet. So I'm gonna show you how to take a little piece like this and extend it so it has like a fake wire stem that you can then insert into your bouquet. So I found a really good candidate for wiring um, on this wax stem. So you can see here, there's, it's a larger stem and there's many little side shoots. So this one is, fine this one here you could just break or cut it off I'd probably cut it um, strip the lower leaves off and that you could insert just like that into a bouquet so I'm going to put that aside but on what's left you can see there's two shoots here and one of them is on the main stem and one of them is sort of like a smaller branch here so this as well you could just use directly like that this one is too short to use in a bouquet you could use it in a boutonniere that's fantastic you would save it especially with wax because it is so expensive but let's say you weren't making boutonnieres and you really needed more wax for your bouquets because you had a lot of bouquets to make so the way you can use this is you want to artificially extend the stem so it's longer and you do that using a wire that's what wiring is you do it the most when you make boutonnieres but you can do it for bouquet work as well um, an example of that would be with orchids if you're adding orchids to a bouquet you 100 percent have to wire them because they have very very tiny stems um, but that's for a different video today we're just going to focus on this so to start you trim it shorter um, like a centimeter or so below where you want the flowers to be. You take your piece of 26 gauge wire. Again, this is a 26 or 28. You want a, a pretty thin wire. You make a hairpin about halfway down. A hairpin is just sort of like a, you, you bend it in half. I'm gonna show it against my hand. I don't know if that's gonna work. That's visible. But it's basically a loop at the top. And I find the easiest way with something like wax that has little branches is to then hang that loop oops it got twisted hang that loop off one of the side branches so it'll hang like it'll like it'd be like this if you um, hold it upside down or if you hold it this way the two ends of the wire just dangle so then you just want to twist it around that little bit of that little nub of the stem that you left you take one and you twist it around all you're doing when you're doing this is just to get that wire secure to that little bit of stem that's left. So now you have this artificial little wire stem. And because that's still a little bit difficult to work with, we're gonna cover it with floral tape. And this is what you would do with boutonniere work. It's exactly the same. You take your green floral tape, you don't use strapping tape. You have to use the green floral non-sticky tape that only becomes sticky when you stretch it. You, you stretch a little bit, you start at the very top, and it's sort of like a, two-handed motion where with one hand you're spinning it and the other hand you stretch about an inch at a time so with these fingers you're spinning the stem and this one you're pulling the tape so you can see that you're, you're keeping everything very slim it's not going to be bulky here it's very tight and very slim you get all the way to the bottom of the stem and now 
you have a little bit, now you have a fake little wax down. And that could be inserted into any bouquet. There's one final thing that I wanted to note. Whenever you use anything that's wired in a bouquet, whether you're wiring orchids or succulents or wax in this case, um, because you've now wired it and it's no longer sitting in water, so this is an artificial wire, it's not, or an artificial stem, it's not gonna drink water, the entire bouquet now has to be kept refrigerated until your wedding day. So typically we make bridal bouquets one to two days in advance of the wedding, which is perfectly fine. I would advise generally if you're DIYing to make it a day before, um, but because we've wired the wax, you would have to put this bouquet in the fridge. So if that's not going to be possible, you need to be sure that all of the bouquets that you make have natural flowers in them with natural stems. You can't wire anything if you're not able to keep it cold. Um, so that was just my, my note about that. It's, it's a very important thing to, to keep in mind. Um, other than that, we're ready to get started. Uh, I've got all of our flowers out on the table. So to get started, I'm gonna take a look and pick out my largest rose. And to me, it looks like one of these ones here. Um, you typically want your biggest flowers in the middle. I mean, look how big that's opened up already. Tibet is a, an amazing white rose. Uh, you want your biggest flowers in the middle because it's your focal point of the bouquet. Um, so with the uh, roses, it's, it, they're pretty much mostly the same. Callas can have a lot of variety in head size. So these were out of the same bucket from the same grower. So you can see like there's quite a bit of difference. So I'd start with this larger one and I'd probably put the smaller ones on the outside of the bouquet. So you just put them together and you make a little cluster. The technique we're gonna use is very similar to making like the hand-tied rose bouquet where you sort of start in the middle and you build around it. Um, for the stock, I've trimmed them all. So they're all, um, they're all, none of them are leggy. They all have the sort of shape that I like. And you can see there's more flowers clustering at the top. So it's pretty straightforward. You, um, I have a mirror to my right. I recommend working with the mirror as well. You'll find that it's um, great for checking the symmetry of the bouquet as you work. I'll work in some wax before I forget. The nice thing about wiring wax as well is the stems are so slim that you can actually, I do this a lot, when you're done your bouquet, you can just insert them from the top and pull them through. So you can kind of add your filler at the very end. I'll add it as I go today for the most part. So what do we have here? We've, I put some more stock in. Sometimes stock is really bushy. It's really fat and thick, which is beautiful. It looks really nice, but it starts to get really bulky down here. So if that ever starts happening, you can, you know, you should know that you're able to break off or I would trim them any florets that are too low down that are getting in the way and you won't damage the flower as long as you're not cutting into the main stem. So um, kind of like we talked about at the beginning of the video, know that you can manipulate flowers to get the look that you want and you won't do them damage as long as you don't damage the main stem that they drink out of. So I'm going to take a look. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to add a bit more filler on this side. And then we'll put another rose in here. So this calla is sort of sinking down into the bouquet. I'm gonna, from the bottom, underneath the head, push it up a little. It was getting too low. So that'll happen sometimes. So you're just gonna keep an eye on that. I'll push these ones up a little too. It's looking really, really nice. I think this is one of my favorite bouquets to make. I find that um, it comes together very quickly. Uh, for the most part, you're using flowers that are pretty long lasting and will stand up to heat. Stock is probably the most delicate out of everything that you're using here. Callas are incredibly long lasting. Uh, if you are worried about anything wilting on your uh, wedding day, callas are an excellent choice. Um, these particular ones here. So we tend to buy stuff and sometimes not have the time to make our video. We, we buy everything for our video. So these are already a bit over two weeks old and they're in really, really good shape. They're still crisp. There's no browning on them. Um, they have been kept cold, so that, that's important. But if it's just a matter of keeping them cold for, um, or keeping them fresh for your wedding, one to two days, they'll last fantastic. Um, and they do hold up to the heat. They're not a flower that wilts very easily. Okay, before I forget about filler, add a bit more here. Add another rose. I really hope this is coming across through the video, but it's looking really pretty, really elegant, very beautiful. And uh, slightly larger than that if we've got one. Mm, maybe some stock. Do 
So as you can see, I'm not making, I'm not taking any particular care to try to cross the stems. Um, that's my habit. You're going to hear different things from different florists. And the thing to remember is like everyone has a preference and everyone has a particular way to do anything. And it's true what the things you do in your regular life. And it's true for floristry as well. I think the most important thing is what works for you. So as long as a finished product looks good and you're getting the desired shape, uh, don't worry excessively about how your stems are crossing down here or whether they're not. I was taught to keep them straight. That was important to the person who taught me. She liked it that way and that's just the way I've kept it up. So uh, it works. You can see the shapes coming together. As I get to the outside of the bouquet, because I want a rounded sort of look and I want the outside to kind of go down, the flowers that are going, going to go on the outside, you remember in the middle I was pushing them up. These ones are going to go down just a little bit. So that's what gets the flowers to curve. So we're getting there. It's looking fantastic. So as I add flowers here, I'm going to put this stalk a little bit lower than this calla. And that's going to start giving us that rounded shape. And then from here, we have a gap here. We can put a rose here again, a little bit lower this rose it's going down like this i don't think i'm adding enough filler because i wired it i'm going to do what i usually do which is i add it from the top it's just easier that way i do tend to do that a lot okay oh wow it's so pretty um okay so let's keep going uh wow really beautiful Garden roses are still in. They're still um, very, very popular. Um, and if you looked into pricing at all, you'll know that they're also extremely expensive. So Tibet's not a garden rose, but if you, if you're, if the garden roses aren't quite in your budget, um, I'm hoping a rose like Tibet would work for you. Um, I love them. I mean, I have access to a lot of different flowers and I still love standard roses. They are uh, super elegant and um, some of the varieties are just as nice as a garden rose in my opinion but it is important to note that not all varieties open the same so that's actually a good opportunity to talk about that um, how much a rose will open will depend on the variety so tibet opens large i find for peach roses tiffany opens really big um, there's a couple of other ones amsterdam is a coral rose that opens very big as well um, so there's that factor it's also the stage that it was picked at so um, how kind of ready for picking it was um, the, the length of the stem taller stems have bigger heads as well so you can't expect all flowers to open that big all roses but um, you can talk to your to your florist or your your flower source to get tips on that if that is something you're looking for um, i'm really happy with this we haven't quite used all the flowers yet so i'll just keep going these um florets here are kind of they're going to get in the way and they're kind of well and that's not so bad but i am going to trim them out because I like a little bit of a cleaner, they're a little bit bulky down here. So I've trimmed those out and I'm going to tuck the rose in where those flowers were. So it's going to stick a little closer to the rest of the bouquet. Okay, we are done. We are ready to wrap it up. So in the end, I ended up using uh, nine roses, no, sorry, eight roses, nine callas and nine stalk. So very well within the, the ranges that we had initially estimated that we would use. Um, a really good size for the average bride. Um, I'm very, very happy with it. So uh, we're ready to add the bouquet ribbon. Um, before I do, I just wanted to point out, so I, bought, um, I wrapped it up with the strapping tape just to hold it in place. And it's gonna be very hard to see this in the video, but I'll just point out that I had some um, tape covered wire from the wired wax that I had used that went uh, further down the bouquet stems so i've trimmed it shorter because i don't want these wired ends sticking out i don't want them visible with wedding work you never want your work to show so natural stems are fine but anything you wired the wire should always be hidden or trimmed shorter in the bouquet so uh, or completely covered with ribbon so that's been trimmed shorter and uh, i've trimmed the entire bouquet shorter as well so it's easier to handle in terms of putting the ribbon on um, if you've watched our other videos, you've seen me do this exact same thing before. I like to start at the top. You can start at the bottom if you'd like. I try to go as high up as I can and uh, I don't use anything to hold it at the top. You could use like a flat sewing pin if you really wanted to, but I find that if I just start wrapping it around, the tension will hold the ribbon in place. So being careful to hide any sort of raw edges. Like I said, with wedding work, everything is neat, everything is elegant, and everything is finished. So 
we go down just a, like, not too far, just a few more inches. I want to be sure that I've covered any wire that's exposed. And I think I will stop here. That's typically about as much ribbon as I put on. I trim it. Again, we have a raw edge, it doesn't look very nice, so we fold it back about a centimeter. And we take our pins, I typically use about three. You can insert them, because if you use the small three quarter inch ones, and this is a very thick handle, as you can see, you can insert them straight across. If you use longer pins, be sure that you're not having them come out the other side, that's no good. Okay, so this is longer than we need it to be. I suppose that comes down to the look you like as well. Some of them might like a longer look. I kind of like it a little bit shorter than this. So uh, my snips are, sorry, just over here. I'm gonna trim it so it's maybe two inches past where the ribbon ends, maybe two and a half. And remember, you always have your vase of water ready because as you know, if you've been watching our videos, flowers start to seal up within seconds of being cut. And you need to get them in water right away. That is what is going to get your bouquet to last. In terms of timing, we mentioned this before, you wanna make your bouquet at least a day in advance. You don't wanna do any work on the day of your wedding and it's keeping the flowers hydrated and in a cool place that's gonna make your bouquet last for your wedding day. Um, I think I've covered it all. If you guys have any questions, always drop me a line. Um, and if you are in the Vancouver area and you need bulk flowers, uh, you contact us at boutajardin.com and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks guys.